Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pinion. I bring you today's word for January 26, 2017. I'm doing a series on the miracles of Jesus. And today we're going to cover the miracle where there was a paralyzed man who had to be carried by his friends into the presence of Jesus. The title of today's message is when your friends partner with you in faith in 2017 for this year to be the best year of your life, you're going to have to surround yourself with people of like precious faith. You need to have some friends that are going to release their faith with you. In Luke 4, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 5 and verse 20, the Bible says, Jesus saw how much faith they had. And he said to the sick man or the paralyzed man, friends, oh friend, your sins are forgiven. So let me give you the background of the story. Let me give you the story. There's a lot here in this passage in, in Luke chapter five. You should read this, the whole story, but let me kind of give you the recap. So one day Jesus was teaching. And of course, people normally came from all over to hear Jesus. Now, this particular day, people had come from every town in Galilee. People was there from Judea and from Jerusalem to hear Jesus. And they came, but Jesus would normally teach outside so the crowds would be there but this particular day he started teaching inside of someone's house uh, someone's house so he's inside of a home and while he's there obviously the people they just couldn't fit in the home so the home was busting at the seams there were people like outside the home just trying to get a peek of jesus so they could hear what he was saying but the bible does say this that the pharisees and the teachers of the law were inside the home as well now they we're going to find out later why they were there but they weren't there really to hear Jesus. They were here. They were there to try to accuse him of anything, you know, if, if he said anything wrong. So here we are. That's the setting. At the same time, the Bible then talks about a paralyzed man. Now, this paralyzed man, he's paralyzed and he hears about the miracle work of Jesus and how Jesus is in the area. And he wants to go to Jesus to get his breakthrough. But the obvious problem is that he's paralyzed, so he can't go, right? So he wants to go, but he can't go. But thank God for friends. He had some friends, and his friends committed to taking him to Jesus. They said, all right, man, this is what we're going to do. We're going to carry you into the presence of Jesus, and we're going to see you, man. You, you're going to walk. You, matter of fact, we're going to carry you there, but you're going to walk home with us. You know, So they were believing God with their friend. So they carried him to the presence of Jesus. So they carry him all the way there. When they get to the house, though, What's the problem? Well, I already told you the house is busting out the seams. There's people standing in the door jam. They, they can't even new people. I mean, people that had their faculties couldn't get in. So so here they are. Their friends are just man carrying their, their buddy. And they're like, what are we going to do now? Now, did they take no for an answer? They could have. Right. They could have said, well, sorry, man, we tried. Or they could have just said, oh, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to stay right here. We're going to wait till the crowd dissipates and we're going to stand right here by the door. We ain't going to let Jesus leave. Before he leaves, he's going to get to talk to you. But no, these guys were relentless. They said, no, we, we committed to getting you into the presence of Jesus, and we're going to get you into the presence of Jesus. So they look around. They're like, what are we going to do? They carry their friend. They said, man, forget it. Let's go. We're going to the roof. So they carry him up to the roof of the house. Now, Jesus is in the house teaching. And they're now on the roof of the house with their buddy. Now what they're going to do? They tore a hole in the roof. I mean, think about that. They were so determined that they tore a hole in the roof. Now picture that for a minute. Jesus is teaching, right? And now some stuff just keeps falling down from the roof. Jesus looking up, what's going on? And a hole opens up. Then the hole opens up so, so wide. I mean, first they just saw hands. They, the, the hole opens up so wide that a man can get through. And they lower their buddy down into the presence of Jesus and they lie him right there in front of Jesus. Now think about that for a minute. What an awesome scene and, and what an awesome commitment of these guys that was like they were committed to their friend. They wanted to see their friend get his breakthrough. And so they lower him down into the presence of Jesus. The Bible says that when Jesus saw their faith, right, he says to the man, friend, your sins are forgiven, right? Now, that's not what he really came for. He, was, he came to get healing, right? But the first thing that Jesus dealt with was his spiritual condition. So Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. And this is exactly what the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were waiting on. They were there not to receive from Jesus. They were there to accuse Jesus. And as soon as Jesus said that, boom, they said, yeah, this is it. This is our opportunity. We're going to accuse him of blasphemy. But before they could even say it, Jesus already know, knew what they were thinking. And he said, okay, this, so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, 
why did this man say that this other man is, is uh, forgiven of his sins? Now, I'm telling you, the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins, but of course, I don't really have any way to prove that to you because you can't see sins. But you know what you can't see? You can't see the fact that this man is paralyzed. What if I said to him, get up and walk? Would you be able to see it then? Matter of fact, just so you know that I have the power to forgive sins, I'm going to do this. Watch this. Hey, son, get up. Get up and walk. Pick up your mat and go on home. Why don't you pick up the thing that was, you can carry the thing that was carrying you. And the guy got up right in front of everybody. The Bible says he got up and started praising God. And then praise erupted. The, the house went crazy. People started praising God, giving God praise. And you know what that did to the Pharisees and to the teachers of the law? It shut their mouth because they were there trying to accuse Jesus and they couldn't do what he was doing. Jesus said, listen, I really came here to forgive people of their sins, but since you can't see that, let me give you some proof. Uh, I'm gonna give you something that you can see. Son, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And he stood up in the presence of all the people there and the crowd went crazy. Now, what does this mean to you today? Now, there's a whole lot in this story I could deal with for days, but I'm just gonna distill it down to three things. Here we go for this morning. Number one, choose your friends wisely. You, you should. You should really choose your friends wisely. The paralyzed man was carried into the presence of Jesus. You know why? Because his friends refused to take no for an answer. They were committed to seeing this guy healed. They released their faith. And the Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. Jesus saw their collective faith. Faith. This man got his breakthrough, not just because of his faith. He got his breakthrough because of their faith. As a believer, you should surround yourself with people of like precious faith. You need to be around people who are going to believe God with you, who are going to release their faith with you, who are going to build you up and never tear you down. People that are not going to inject doubt or fear or unbelief, people that are going to inject faith that are going to release their faith with you. They're going to speak the word only. You need to be around people who, who, will, who will release their faith with you for your dreams and that won't be dream killers. So you got to be very careful who you surround yourself with. Sometimes, watch this, you need friends because we all go through challenging times. You need friends who will be there with you, who are going to believe God with you and who will carry you even if, like this guy. If, if they need to carry you, they'll carry you during tough times. Number two, don't allow small obstacles to keep you from your breakthrough. This is very frustrating to me. I mean, obviously dealing with people in ministry, you, you run across people who just allow small stuff to keep them. They, they, they just, well, what happened? You said you were going to do. Yeah, but then this happened. Well, yeah, but then that happened. Well, that, you were not determined. Do you know where I would be if I, if I just allowed small obstacles to keep me from what I'm believing God for? I would never receive anything from God. Are you crazy? You got to believe God through the obstacles. Opposition is going to come, but I'm not going to give up just because of opposition. Matter of fact, if it doesn't look like I'm winning, then the fight is not over yet. I, I'm tired of believers saying that they are an overcomer, but then you, you run every time you have something to come over. You can't be an overcomer if you don't come over anything. You got to believe God and don't let obstacles stand in your way. There will always be obstacles to you getting into the presence of God. You just can't allow those obstacles to stop you. If your heart is open to take no for an answer, then no is going to be your answer. Let me say that again. If you allow your heart to be open, to take no for an answer, then let me just tell you right now, no is your answer. You have to believe God. Faith requires believing through opposition. Yeah, there's going to be opposition. We're going to go right through it. I'm going to believe God. I, will, I refuse to allow what I see to change what I said. I'm believing God and I'm not going to change what I believe just because the devil Raise his nasty head. We're going to believe God through the opposition. Say amen to that. Number three and finally, as a believer, you should have visible faith. Visible. Faith should be heard. Faith should be seen. The text says that Jesus saw their faith. He saw it. He saw it in their actions. My question for you is, can people see your faith? Can people, can people hear it, right? They should hear the language of faith coming from your lips. And then they should see your faith actually in action. 
Faith shouldn't just be something you talk about. Faith should be something that should be seen. Now, we live in a society of skeptics today, and there's a whole lot of people who think that as Christians, because they don't see the power of God operating in your life, and you're afraid of actually putting it on display, they think that Christians are just people that, that are just modern day people holding on to old stories. No, we ain't holding on to no old stories. My God manifests himself daily, every day, even now. He should manifest himself in your life as well. But you got to have faith that that is on display. Now, I, I run into people who say, well, you know, they're, they're hiding their faith under the guise of being personal. Oh, brother, brother Rick, I'm just a personal person. It's just personal to me. Yeah, it should be personal, but it should also be visible. I got it that it should be personal, but it should also be visible. Your faith should not be so personal that nobody can see it. No, that's not faith, baby. You got to allow yourself to, to, to give yourself over to God, to where God can be seen in what you say and what you do. God needs to be on display in your life. Jesus saw their faith. He saw it in their actions. Faith is an action word. People should be able to see your faith in action on a daily basis. Last question, closing question. Can the world see Jesus in you? Can they? Think about it for a minute. If they can't, if the world can't see Jesus in you, then there's something wrong. It's time to make some changes. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and declare this over your life. Say, Father, this is a year of great victory for me. This year I am determined to walk in your best for my life. To do so, I must surround myself with people of like precious faith. I declare that I do. Together we can and we will accomplish more than we ever could apart. One can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. I walk by faith with my friends and they walk by faith with me. Our faith is on display for all the world to see. We are not ashamed of Jesus or his gospel. We boldly declare Jesus is Lord. And as Jesus is, so am I in this world. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Look on the right-hand side of the website, sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. Share this message with someone you know needs to watch this video. As you walk into this day, you need to be surrounded. I mean, I'm telling you, connect yourself with people of like precious faith, release your faith with them, allow them to release their faith with you, and together you will experience God's best for your life in 2017. God bless you.